Well, thanks for tuning in yet again to How to Invest with Rabi Agarwal, a series that we're doing with the veteran investor. The last two episodes have discussed the first two facets of what Ramdev believes are the principles of investing. Somewhere in the last episode, Ramdev spoke to us about the power of compounding and the power of focus. But he also spoke about what good would these be if the quality of the management is not correct. And he added on a facet saying that what if the price is not right. So instead of making a three-part series, we've now made it a four-part series. Part three of this series speaks about the power of quality in investing. Now, uh, a particular standard defines quality, uh, not uh, really from a perspective of a stock price, but defines quality as a sum total of features and characteristics of a product or a service that bears its ability to satisfy stated or implied needs. And Ramdev, I don't think there is anything that uh, is different from a stock market perspective as well when you speak about the yes. quality of a management. Yeah, so uh, quality, we refer to quality of business as well as quality of management. So their quality is, uh, I mean, a business is, actually, let's understand what the business is. Hmm. What are businesses? Hmm. Okay. Business is capital input output machine. Hmm. It, just keep it very simple. I mean, every business is a capital input output machine. You put in uh, $100 million or 1,000 crores, and uh, you output 100, either if you're a very profitable company, you take out as much as 2,000 crores, if you are moderately profitable, then it might be 1,000, say 1,200 crores. And if you are really gruesome business, then it could be, say, 800 or 700. Hmm. There could be actually a reduction in the capital. So it's a, it all depends on the quality of the business. If the quality of business is fantastic, actually you don't need even 1,000, to earn 1,000 crores, you don't need 1,000 crores. Right. The business are so good, some of them. So it depends on the quality of business. So the, And quality of business also is... Uh, has two facets. One is the quality of business per se, and second is the quality of management. When terrific business is run by terrific management, you get a terrific stock. Hmm. You know, so, uh, uh, you know, say like, uh, it, it, I can explain you only by the, say like, uh, uh, IT business. I hmm. think one of the most wonderful business in the last 20 years have been a IT exports business from India. Now, uh, hundreds and hundreds of companies came in 90s, hmm. started in 80s and flowered in 90s. I mean, by 2000, there were hundreds. I mean, you know, at the Y2K boom, what happened? It was a plethora of companies, sure. small, big, all colors from all, all over the country, Chennai, uh, Delhi, your, uh, of course, Bangalore, from all over the companies came. But only three or four companies survived. Hmm. You know, opportunity was same, clients were same, rates were same, resources were same, constraints were same, everything was same. But the, so the business was fantastic because it was Indian cost, American value. Mm. And Americans were going mad to get the Indian software guys. So the business opportunity was fantastic. Margins were obscene, 50-60% was a military margin. So business was good, but management was a questionable. Because mm. in this rush, a lot of bad managements also entered or marginal managements also entered. Mm. And only three or four like TCS, Infosys, Wipro, <coughs> SCL. I mean, these are three, four companies only survived. So, uh, the quality of companies come out uh, when the good business is run by very good management, very good set of management. Hmm. And uh, initially, you cannot figure out in 93, 94 when uh, IPO of Infosys also failed. At that time, is it a good business? I mean, yes. I didn't know what is software business at all hmm. in 93, 94. Hmm. So, it takes some time for you to figure out this is a good business. Hmm. But Good businesses, they tend to last a long time. See? Okay. So once the business is born, I mean, say IT business is born or a pharma export business is born, it is not going to be over in one or two years or three years. Typically, these businesses, hmm. they last for a decade, two decades, three decades, depending on the businesses. Hmm. So what we have to see is also longevity of goodness. Hmm. One is the quality per se and uh, how long the business can be good. Right, but this is this is uh, a slightly tricky bit, Ramdev, yeah. and 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 I'm guessing the answer is obvious, but I'm still asking yeah. for the benefit of a lot of viewers. There are there are gruesome businesses that also last for yes. a long time, and there are these good businesses that also last yeah. for a long time. There are cyclical businesses which yeah. last for a really long yeah. time. Yeah. From an investor's perspective, mm. how does one kind of differentiate the wheat from the chaff? Yeah, so well, as I said, uh, good businesses are the businesses which earn 
significantly above the cost of capital. Hmm. Because I said... Irrespective of the cycle. Irrespective of the cycle. I mean, you can, you can have a business which is absolutely secular business, like consumer business. Why consumer business are expensive? Because they are, I mean, of course, in a slightly very, very uh, adverse conditions, they might slow down. Hmm. But typically, they don't go down in the hmm. sense that their growth rates might come down from 20% to 5%, 3%, 2%. Hmm. But they generally don't go down by 30, 40%. Right. Cyclical businesses in bad cycle, they get reduced to one third or half and again they start the journey up. So uh, that's a fundamental difference between a, but cyclicals can also be good. Hmm. It's not that cyclical per se is a bad business. Uh, so uh, there can be a monopolistic condition in a business and of course it is passing through a cycle. So even in bad time, they'll earn 15, 20%. Hmm. In good time, they might earn 70, 80%. So uh, uh, per se, cyclicality is not a bad thing. Hmm. But then investing in cyclical companies is more challenging. And even so, you know, when you like, when you understand and when you like it, it turns out that uh, it's already at the peak. And when you start hitting it and you sell it, it turns out that that was the right. bottom. Right. So that is a problem with the uh, cyclical businesses. Whereas in quality secular businesses, what happens is you buy once, okay, you may, you pay a little higher price, but. But you are assured, I mean, initially in two, three years, because you have paid full price, your returns will be less. Hmm. But markets tend to discount heavily the longer term future. Hmm. You know, I mean, after two, three, four years, these companies, they become, they become very uh, much more reasonably priced because you have paid the purchase price four years back sure. and business is growing continuously. I'll give you an example. Asian Paints, I mean, for some reason, I was knowing it's a terrific company from 1985 only because where I was staying, few managers of Asian Paints were staying and so they were all my friends. Hmm. So uh, they all told me it's a fantastic company and you could see it all over. In fact, I used to sit, uh, whenever I was in Rapport, I used to sit in one of the Asian Paints shop only in the evening, just to pass time. So I had seen Asian Paints is a terrific company. But to, to, with my limited understanding of valuation and all, I thought paying 20p multiple for Asian Paints in 91 hmm. was too high a price because right. the markets were at 10-12p or 14p and uh, premium, uh, premium valuation as 20p was high. I was willing to pay 17, 18 and I didn't buy. When I was ready to buy a 20p, it became 30p. When I actually got agreed to buy a 26, uh -huh. 27p, it became 45p. Wow. And still we have not been able to buy convincingly. Uh -huh. So this is what really happens in quality companies. You know, Go because ahead. you you buy, of course it is expensive at 20p in 91. But if, you ha if I had given a say one year of uh, low return, then re uh, rest of the 20 years I would have made money. Got it. You know, so the uh, quality companies will always look a little expensive. Uh, as, uh, you know, one of the quotes says, you know, it is easy to explain hmm. what stock is, which stock is cheap. Hmm. But it is very difficult to convince yourself, forget about the world, huh. that it's a great company. You know, <laughs> because the, the real margin of safety in investing lies hmm. not so much in the price. Okay. But in the uh, quality of the companies. Very interesting you say that because the next conversation, the next episode that we are going to have is on price. Yeah. But yeah, it's very interesting that you say that. And you know, we'll bring up some of these quotes as well that Ramdev is speaking about. I have one more question, but before I get to that, yeah. my final question, because Ramdev, we have a yeah. bunch of queries yes. and I want you to answer some of those. Yeah. But I just, I just want to use some charts that we uh, brought out uh, via the terminal as well. Since Ramdev was speaking about how uh, if you buy into a quality company, uh, the price is not as important as the quality of the management. Let me just show you one chart. This is, I think, a 20-year chart, if I'm not wrong, of HDFC Bank <laughs> versus the benchmark. Now, I'm using HDFC Bank. Ramdev didn't benchmark bring that example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Ramdev didn't bring that. But look at that. This is the 20-year performance yes. of HDFC Bank versus the Nifty, which by itself has not given bad returns. But now, look at what HDFC Bank, which is the blue line, has done versus the Nifty. And that probably shows, Ramdev, that quality can not just give you returns, but can give you astronomical returns astronomical as well. Astronomical return. I mean, astronom astronomical return in the long run is possible only with the quality. I can tell you this. Okay. If you have buy and hold approach, the, I mean, HDFC Bank, I know, I mean, from day one, I'm tracking this company. It got listed at 40 bucks, means 800 crores, less than 1,000 crores. Today, it is 5 lakh crores. Wow. I mean, with little dilution, huh. I'm sure it must be up 4,000 times or 400 times. Yeah. Four, 400 times. <laughs> 400 times in 20 years, yeah. flat. So this chart made the Nifty look bad, but let us uh, reaffirm it. The yeah, Nifty, Nifty is not, not bad. So bad. It is, Nifty is uh, not so bad. It's HGC just HGC Bank, good. which is so good. HGC Bank is very good. Yeah. 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 Now, my last question, because yes. as I said, we have a bunch of queries around there. My last question is, um, Warren Buffett, I, I remember, I, I don't know if his thought process or his chat has changed, but he used to always say, uh, in the past at least, that 
uh, he wants to buy businesses which even an idiot can run. Yes. So he kind of laid a lot of emphasis on the quality of the business. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, uh, is that different for a place like India? wherein managements are also known to run businesses to the ground in a big way. Maybe it happens across the world. Yeah. But is that theory different for India or you wouldn't think so? No, it's same. I mean, running businesses all over the world is same. Hmm. I mean, even North Korea would be same. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> running business is no different. <laughs> so, uh, so, I mean, it's a question of opportunity. You know, I mean, uh, typically, I mean, Mr. Buffett in 2007 seminal paper, I mean, his uh, annual report, he wrote about great, good, gruesome. Hmm. So he talked about three types of companies, you know. And uh, I mean, every country has maybe uh, 30 to 50 great companies. Mm. Great companies means you make money without using capital. Mm. And now we have a different set of companies, which are, you know, Amazon and this Fang companies, which are, I mean, which have just redefined the capitalism. Yes. And, uh, uh, and they don't use capital and they make humongous amount of the franchises so powerful, yes. Google and all. They are making money like uh, 30 billion dollars, 40 billion dollars, 50 billion dollars, and it's still growing 30, 40 percent on that. So I think uh, uh, the great companies are fewer. Every country has their own set of great companies. Mm. Then you have a middle five, seven percent of the companies which are good, and then you have about 75, 80 percent which are gruesome companies. Right. Available for long-term investing. You can do punting. Yeah, I'm sure you can. I, I don't know, Ramdev, you can slip in, sorry, one more. I'm just, every time I speak to you, I feel like I have a last question, then I have three more. But do you, uh, do you, Ryu, I don't know how, how large your investments, if at all, would be in some of these US-based stocks, the FANG companies, zero, or otherwise, zero. zero. Uh, why, why is that so? Because of capital controls, no? Like, you cannot buy, you have to send some $200,000 every year, every person of the family and all. I mean, managing that is... Uh, which quality company listed uh, in the US, mm. uh, which you have not been able to buy, which you wish you could have buy if these controls were not available in mm. buy? One, one would have been Google for sure. Uh -huh. Google, MasterCard when it got listed. Uh -huh. uh, MasterCard, Google, and uh, I mean these two, three I actually looked into. I did buy into 5% of my portfolio into Berkshire Hathaway four, five years back. Then we sold it because uh, uh, we realized that we can make only 10, 12 percent on that, you know. And my portfolio criteria was to make 25 percent. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> it didn't fit into that. I spent full day in New York, sitting there and met some people, and then we concluded that at best you can make 10 percent compounded on that side of the balance sure. sheet. So I said, let me give a pass. Wow, okay, awesome. So yeah. much more to talk about, but let's start off with the queries because as I said, we have a bunch of queries. Um, okay, let's start with the WhatsApp query that we've received. Uh, it's coming in from Sumit Samant, and Sumit asks, how can you measure quality? Which parameters of quality, uh, are, uh, which parameters are qualitative and which of them are quantitative? Uh, which parameters within you, the facets of how can you measure quality is there a way yeah. you can measure yeah, quality yeah. and what within quali measuring quality what parameters would be qualitative what would be quantitative yeah so you know quality you can you can feel it you know hmm. i mean and then you go to the see ultimately it's all about the numbers one is narrative and numbers in companies hmm. you have to figure out a good story uh, when, whenever somebody tells me a good story, I go and check the numbers. Huh. Or when I see a terrific number, I huh. go and find the story. Okay. But both must marry. Sure. If one is not there, huh. then other is of no use. Okay. So, uh, uh, what is the question? So, he's asking if there is a way, if huh. there is a way to yeah. uh, measure quality, one in qualitative terms, and if there is a way of quantifying quality. Yeah. So, let's look at the quantification of the uh, quality. Hmm. So, uh, Mm, quantification we start with the uh, financial numbers like return on equity okay or return on capital employed uh, and uh, good thing is that with electronic tracking of databases you can see on a quarterly basis what is the uh, return on equity so we I mean uh, looking at Indian uh, scenario uh, uh, now interest rates are a little lower but earlier we used to think eight nine percent ten percent is to be risk free hmm. so another five percent as a uh, kind of equity risk and we used to say 15 percent is the cutoff rate and 15 percent has been the uh, Benchmark. benchmark number mm. for even equity returns and also so if anybody makes more any company makes more than 15 percent on a sustained basis mm -hmm. that company uh, something is going on there okay and then you go and figure out the story so uh, typically I like more like 20 25 percent but 15 percent is definitely cut off and one of the criteria we use very stringent is that 
फाइव टू टेन ईयर्स एवरी ईयर फिफ्टीन परसेंट सी वन ईयर कंपनी कैन अर्न फोर्टी परसेंट नेक्स्ट अगेन इट गोज टू थर्टी परसेंट एंड थर्ड ईयर इट गोज टू टेन परसेंट और ट्वेल्व परसेंट एंड देन अगेन इट कम्स बैक सो दैट्स नॉट अ टेरफिक कंपनी इट्स यू नो सो द कंपनीज विच विच इज स्टार्ट एट फिफ्टीन परसेंट सी टिपली वॉट इज द लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ कंपनी टिपली लाइफ साइकिल इज फॉर फर्स्ट फाइव टू टेन ईयर्स द कंपनी स्ट्रगल टू सर्वाइव नाइन्टी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ द कंपनीज दे डाई ओनली वन परसेंट ऑफ द कंपनी सर्वाइव एंड देन सडनली दैट कंपनी ब्लूम्स एंड यू कैन सी इन द नंबर्स दैट द कंपनी फर्स्ट टाइम आफ्टर एट टेन ईयर्स मेक्स मोर देन फिफ्टीन परसेंट रिटर्न ऑन कैपिटल दैट इज द पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम यू स्टार्ट कैचिंग दैम ओके बिकॉज इट डिपेंड्स ऑन कंपनीज बट मोस्टली आफ्टर दैट टेन टू फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी ईयर्स इज इन हिज पॉकेट फॉर profitable period competitive mm. advantage period what you can mm. call it mm. where he is beaten the world and he started making money God. that is a period you have to uh, uh, you have to have it in the portfolio mm. now uh, so uh, return on equity is the first starting point sure then the moment return on equity is there then you start looking at whether they have the good terms of trade or not mm. so again from the debtors if the if the return on equity is say 20% the next ratio immediately i go and see i'm telling you what i do of course okay uh, and this is amalgam of all the books i have read so far sure so these are all tricks which uh, uh, which over a period of time i have learned and Super. i start uh, using so the moment i see the return on equity is very high hmm. first thing i go and see is what is the debtor's level what is the uh, the uh, in, in how fast he collects the money okay because if you are profitable is it just a industry is in uh, profit hmm. or you have a very specific advantage sure if you have a specific advantage and you are loved by your customers and all you should get your money very quickly got it so when you sell uh, products and services and you have less than 30 days uh, kind of collection period you know so uh, i mean then it is confirmed that you have a and and if that less than 30 days is a sustained over a period of time hmm. so what happens is that 30 day less than 30 days collection period would be there for last 10 years but you started making money now it means the company not only is profitable it also has a growth franchise with the customers you know so like that and then you go and see the cash flow hmm. whether the cash flow operating cash flow is good free cash flow is good hmm. when all things put together then you look at the growth number hmm. the, where is the growth hmm. i mean how uh, how uh, how much growth is there in the uh, uh industry sure what is the growth expected for the industry or uh, and what is the growth for the companies because mm. the growth can come from two uh, two forms one is the tailwind in the industry yes and how much market share you can gain sure so if you are 2% market share and you are a very competitive advantage company you can go to 20% of the the thing like what happened in hsc bank hsc bank started with zero in 96 mm. had nothing today there are 6% of the entire deposit and credit just to give a comparison sbi is 22% of the deposit and credit so if by chance sbi and the industry itself is growing at 12% yes so in a 12% growing industry if you gain the market share from 6 to 12% you imagine what happens to hgs bank wow so when you find this kind of machine at the early stage and you see whether there is a there is a industry growth rate as well as there is a because the depth of the moat will decide how big a share you'll get got it you know so that's how Uh, quantitatively we assess the uh, size of the moat my question to you would then would be and i'm yeah. i'm sure we'll talk about this on the next episode as well yeah. Yeah. but what if such opportunities seem priced to perfection would you still go out and selectively i'm not asking you'll do it every time but you still go out and buy them because the because time is your friend as you said in the previous am and with time these stocks will become cheap and eventually make money yeah i mean price to perfection is price to perfection for next 20 years of growth if you have price which is difficult right then it becomes so you know in 91 i thought that 20 p was price to perfection yeah and you learned yeah, it the hard way yeah <laughs> hard way in 2005 <laughs> i'm thinking even 30 p was uh, cheap enough are you saying you thought of asian paints in 1991 and ended up buying on in 2005 no i didn't okay. buy okay. i okay. never bought because every time i used to think what is price i'm willing to pay the world was uh, pricing at 30 40% premium got it so uh, what i'm saying is that uh, this price to perfection is also function of what is my cost of money and how long i am seeing into the future sure. okay. and what is my return requirement return requirement my return requirement is 25 so i want to pay a little low price yeah. the guy from, coming from japan if he gets 5% he's pretty yeah. happy <laughs> he wants to take only 20% of what my return is so he can pay five times more price got it okay and, and now the market is far more global than ever before yes okay so in fact uh, the markets will have huge impact of uh, global cheap cheap global money chasing the stocks here wow. in comparison to 
what is happening in other parts of the world for the quality and growth. Uh, we're probably seeing a small disruption in between right now, but that that's will change. Okay. Uh, these okay. are cycles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, that, that's interesting. I think this one answer, uh, in a manner of speaking, distilled the investment philosophy of Ramdev or stock uh, selection philosophy of Ramdev in a big way. Uh, this was this was very helpful. Thanks, Ramdev. I'm moving on to the next query, and that is coming in from Abhinav Kumar, who asks. Uh, okay, he's using your parameters, QGLP, in this discussion. But he's asking why is quality the first parameter and how much, how much weight does it carry in the overall formula? See, in QGLP, everything is sequential. sequential. If there is no quality, in quality also, quality of business and quality of management. Even if the God is running, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, all three are running a useless business. It doesn't go through. Got so it. it has to be terrific business. Huh. That's the first thing. Hmm. Second is a terrific management. So that, that completes the queue. That is 80%, I would say, of the analysis. Then growth. Hmm. And then longevity of growth. Hmm. Is it one year is fair or it is a longevity? Hmm. And then only we look at the price. There's no point in, see, if I don't know, I mean, if you are looking at a tie and you don't know who, what is a brand, what is the point? Yeah. I mean, the moment you say your tie is from uh, Fairgamo or this thing, it doesn't matter how badly it is looking. It, it all depends on the tag, you know. And the, there is no tag. The uh, price is one tenth. So knowing the value, see, that's I, I think last time also I said uh, one of the biggest advantages in the market is that ninety nine percent of the people are chasing prices mm. through the charts and whole lot of things. Okay, one percent, if at all there is one, one percent are chasing value. Value. And by chasing price, you don't have that kind of complete advantage. Mm. By chasing value, you can have a difference in estimates like big time because value is not written anywhere. Sure. Value is all estimated in the minds. Mm. So you might, as I said, Japanese will value Asian prints very differently than around the world because my cost of money is five times that of. Got it. Yeah. Okay. In fact, so on that, uh, I have one quote from Ramdev and I have a chart as well that we've put out. So like we showed you the power of quality and what a quality stock can do over a 20 year period. We've shown uh, one more example of a company and I'm no one to say that the, this stock or this management is bad quality, but the market has shown that that company over a 20 year period has really underperformed, maybe because of some qualitative parameters, but it just shows the return versus the nifty. I'm using the nifty really loosely as a benchmark. It's not the benchmark, but Mafatlal Industries is the stock that- Mafatlal Industries. Yeah, I've just bring up, brought up that stock and just shown right. how the 20 year performance of Mafatlal, it is, it is underperforming the nifty. The red line is the nifty and this company has underperformed completely. Now compare that to what HDFC Bank did and you will see how differences in quality, either of businesses or management or both, can really create wealth or destruct wealth. I think I'm just yeah. using that example that you no, gave out there. But why are you singling out one company? No, no, because I'm there not are singling out thousands one company, of right. companies like that. Completely agree. Yeah. yeah, but I'm just saying, I'm not yeah. referring to this as being a bad <coughs> sure, management sure, or a bad sure. yeah. uh, quality management or a bad business. But that's the difference, a good and, but actually what you should do is blue and red. Hmm. But in HDFC and the uh, other yeah, then, bad uh, then you see the divergence. The divergence. Because there is an actual destruction. You lost 90% in one company yeah. and you have made 400, 400 times in another one. In another one. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So 400 into 10, yeah. that's at 4,000 times. Yeah. Okay, remember, this is not something that we are saying that the management or the business is bad quality. It's just the market perception and therefore the returns that the stock has shown. But I was using some quotes on quality investing that Ramdev has given. Uh, very interesting that you're saying, Ramdev, that quality is never an accident. It is always the result of an intelligent effort. But, yeah. Why do you say that? Yeah, so uh, the companies don't become great uh, just by accident. You know, I mean, there's a lot of effort. In fact, the main job of successful uh, manager or management is to only deepen the moat. Mm. Because the, once you deepen the moat, mm. uh, it's like uh, in the race, improving your uh, you know speed. So you are sprinting. I mean, every time you will you will keep doing that 0.1 second, 0.1 second improvement. That is deepening the moat. Mm. If you are able to instead of 30 seconds, if you can do it in 29 and a half, I mean, you have a huge advantage yes. in the sprinting. So. Uh, moat is like that and moat allows you not only to be the last to die because if there is an attack then in capitalism all the moats will be attacked when the attack comes from outside by way of substitute or by the new uh, newcomer mm. at that point of time he has to work very hard to catch up with you because mm. the moats are very deep sure the gap between what an ordinary can do and what you can do 
the gap is massive. Mm. So that guy has to beat you in the gap and then enter your house. So uh, uh, it's a it's a complete warfare in the uh, you know kind of businesses. Mm. So the new entrant cannot enter. Yeah. And uh, keeping the new entrant outside the you know the boundary is the game of uh, making money. I'm temp so tempted to ask you on there, but I mm. won't no. as to whether telecom, the incumbents <laughs> have that boat or no, because there's a newcomer who's disrupting that industry. No, but we'll move on. Yeah. We'll stick to the principles of investing in this conversation at least. Harsh Joshi has asked the next question. He asked that quality is a subjective term. So how do you decide what is a quality stock and which one to stick with? Quality was subjective term. Yeah. So, so how do you decide what is quality? Yeah, so You've given the parameters, yeah, but yeah. how does one decide to stick with it? Yeah, so one of the best thing about investing is do what you understand. <laughs> okay. Huh. There are ten companies, and uh, see, one is the possibility, another is the probability. Huh. You know, um, I mean, when you see everything is perfect, but I'm not able to understand this. Huh. Everything you don't understand, huh. like in technology. Uh, uh, I mean, you can't see the uh, 5, 10, 15 years into the future, at least a person like me. But the younger kids, my son or somebody, they would have a much better feel about uh, what's happening because I have not been in social media also. What's, so to say Facebook is uh, absolutely competitive advantage, it is, for, it is very tough for me to say that. But the user, I mean the kids, they can say, I mean, there is nothing uh, as good as this. Do you take your son's advice for investing in technology? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, I, 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 I don't take anybody's advice for investing my money. Okay. I great. have to rely on myself okay. because ultimately the most reliable person is me. Uh, awesome. <laughs> okay, that's a point to learn. So, Sorry, but you're finished uh, yeah, so making you a point. To, uh, so, you have, to, you, have to, you have to take care of something which you understand. Hmm. So, between two proposals, one where I have a deep understanding of the subject and even if it is slightly inferior to one which is significantly better but my understanding is weak and I'm dependent on somebody else I'll take it I'll take the weaker one got it okay okay and so it's all about the portfolio yeah. I mean I think there are not so many ideas I mean mm -hmm. if you have 20 stock portfolio it will be very tough for you to you know, find 20 great ideas. Yeah, for sure. And I think this also goes back to a conversation that we had in the first episode, that for you to be able to determine all of these, you need to do ample research yourself in order to be able to take that call, be it about the quality, be it about the focus in the portfolio, or for the matter, determining what's the, what, what kind of compounding machine is a particular stock. Anyways, the next query is coming from Ankit Shah on WhatsApp. He's asking, do you measure the quality of a company by its financial strength or return and capital ratios or competitive strength and I'm guessing the answer is a mixture of all mixture. but what would you give more importance yeah, to Ramdev, so if see, at all yeah so this is a good question see there is a story hmm. that uh, the best biscuit is XYZ sure. okay and second you are also consumer of biscuit hmm. you go and try look at home you know whether you are using that biscuit or your wife's first must have list is this biscuit or that biscuit Okay, or you can see around the kids and all, and look at how many players are there. So these are all stories. Then you realize that, okay, 60% or 70% uh, of the market share of that particular product is one, with one company. And the next player, say like Maruti. Maruti is 52, 53% of the car. I mean, one out of two cars are Maruti. And there's a waiting list of 30, 35% of their products are in wait listed. They can't produce enough of that. Now. The next guy is 12%, 14% Hyundai, mm. and there is no third person. Mm. This country, I mean, this is the last bastion of the cars in the world. I mean, China does 24 million, we do 3 million. We hope in next 10, 12 years, if not in 10 years, 15 years, ah. we will do the almost same numbers ah. of 15, 17, 18 million dollars. So ultimate growth market for cars is in this world. And he's the guy who makes one out of two cars. True. Okay, so this is a story part. Huh. Now go and see whether it is reflected in the numbers. Huh. It, it's narrative and numbers must match. Sure. This, I mean, then you figure out that uh, uh, government doesn't, for some reason, government doesn't want you to make money. Hmm. Then you'll see that uh, it breaks down because sure. ultimately market will respect the number. Hmm. Market, market is slave to the numbers. True. The story might be fantastic. Hmm. It doesn't matter. Hmm. But if there is no number, finally it will uh, fall off. Yeah, but if the government is not disrupting mm. and if there are enough sales showing, then, then tough that, times the, can also provide great buying opportunities of quality businesses. Tough times are the Always best times to, to buy, buy. Uh, quality businesses. And you know, the reason I brought that up, Ramdev, mm. is because mm. 
I somehow preempted huh. that we'll have this discussion, uh -huh. and I'm bringing one more chart out here. See, that's the, see, that's that's the beauty of the conversations that we have had over the last two sessions, Ramdev. Yes. The chart, the third chart that we got today, is of the one-year return of Maruti. We're trying to show, talk about quality, sustaining not just over the long run, but the short run. And again, out here, you see that period wherein the blue line, which is the Maruti line, dipped during what was arguably a slightly tough time or perceived tough time during demonetization. And then the return that the stock has given over the index, which has also done extremely well over the last 12 months. And I think you were trying to make one more point, Rande, out here, that uh, if you buy a quality business, and if the market gives you an opportunity to buy a quality business in a really tough time, you should probably try and lap that opportunity up. You buy the day on which you understand the quality of the company. Okay. Jab jago, tab sabera. Tab sabera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I wish I understood when it was 500 or 100. I think the issue came. In fact, there's a small story. Huh. The, the day on which issue came, I was there in Taj. Huh. And I was attending Tisco, uh, Tisco Analyst Meet or something. Huh. In the next door, Mr. Suzuki himself was uh, doing the IPO meet of Maruti. And my analyst has a sell on this before the IPO itself. I said, still let me go and see how Japanese speak English. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he said, he, he spoke only one sentence. He said, small car for the big dream. Okay. And you see where, where he has created. It was 130 bucks a stock. I think there is no split or anything like that. Uh. This thing. And now it is 8,000 bucks. So, wow. uh, you know, understanding the, I mean, I didn't understand. My uh. analyst didn't understand at that point of time. Uh. It took a lot of time and we became really bullish. More at uh, two two thousand or something. Uh -huh. So, jab jago tab sabera. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and even then, from then also, it's been a, a stock that has given phenomenal returns yeah. as well. Okay, Puneet More has a has, has a fundamental question. He's asking about what are the standard parameters to choose a quality stock. Puneet, I think we've uh, this is a question that I think has come out just now. I think we've answered almost all of those or some of yeah. those. You want to add something to that, Ramdev? I think we've talked about almost all the key standard parameters, but if you want to add yeah. something more. So, uh, standard parameters to choose a quality stock, I think uh, you can start from the story or you can start from the number. Hmm. If you don't have the story going, hmm. in that case, you can do your screeners and figure out. See, one of the screeners we did, I was actually doing Imami. Okay. Uh, and uh, I figured out. When that, was this? Uh, this was about two years back. Uh -huh. So uh, in Imami, somebody, somebody, see, somebody says that this is a terrific company, hmm. and you believe that guy understands that what is terrific means. Hmm. Okay. Huh. So then you immediately go in and see the screen. Yes. What is the magic? Hmm. I mean, what's really happening to the uh, return requirements and things like that. Sure. So I was looking. Then I realized that uh, uh, Imami uh, collects the data in less than 30 days. Mm -hmm. So it just struck to me, let me see all the companies which uh, collect the money in 30 days. So I found a pharmaceutical company, unknown pharmaceutical company, which collects it in 10 days. Wow. I said, this company I never heard. What is this? Two, 300 crores company and 300 crores market cap. I don't want to name the company. Sure, yeah. I leave the team. I huh. picked up phone and talked to the management. Huh. And he was kind enough to talk to me. Huh. He said, sir, no, we don't have a, a data. We have an advance of 15 days for <laughs> uh, products. <laughs> Wow, this was two years back. Huh? Two, two years back. Uh. We bought, so I said, enough. I kept the phone down, and after that, we started buying. I bought, uh, I think, from 40, 50,000 shares I got, and uh, the stock started flying. That very day, it was 10% up, and then 20% up, and I think all the, uh, my sales guys, they all picked it up. And the stock, uh, in next one year, went to 1,200 or something. Okay, and it's still telling it is 12, 40, 100, or 1500, something like that. So, you know, uh, you can pick up complete advantage or uh, goodness from one segment. See, from the terms of trade. I mean, this is the terms of trade I have seen works very well, and very few exploit this. Yes. Okay, uh, then, uh, of course, return on equity is there, margin is there, highest margin companies, mm. you know, or uh, most expensive products, say a cement company, which sells at 50 rupees premium a bag. Yeah. This, everybody sells at 300. This brand sells at 350. There must be something. Doing Either something right. At the end of it, he's giving 50 kg of cement only. <laughs> so what is so great about it? Sure. So somebody will tell that the quality is very good, very consistent. Huh. Then you see, you know, how he's winning the market and how the profit. Because cost structure for quality is not very different. Sure. Quality is not expensive to produce. Hmm. It is. Uh, it is only visible in the that intelligent effort or consistent effort or somebody's dedication to make it happen. Yeah. And in that uh, dedicated effort, intense effort, passion, you know, brings that extra quality. Like Vada Pao, a mm. good Vada Pao and bad Vada Pao, cost is same. Yeah. 
but uh, after eating good vada pav you immediately want second one ah. and you want a parcel for your family ah. that's how the you know good vada pav sells <laughs> yeah for all those who are I, i think everybody knows what a vada pav is but this is more a mumbai maharashtra specific <laughs> dish so people watching outside mumbai yeah come to mumbai for vada pav as well i just want to ask you one thing yeah. ramde uh, do you rigidly stick to these parameters and the reason i ask this to you is i don't know if you remember but maybe 5 or 6 years ago we were doing a session at wellinkers institute mm. of mm. management studies uh, this was d- around diwali yeah, yeah. and uh, after the session got over we were talking about a company mm. and i was telling you i thought i could give you an idea and mm. i was telling you and you asked me neeraj does this company have uh, return on capital iska kya hai yeah. and i told you it is this much so you asked me three parameters and you said ke i don't want to know what the business is because the return ratios are not as yeah. per my parameters and yes. therefore even if it is a great story i don't want to look at it yes. you yeah. still stick to that very same, rigidly same in fact it is becoming sharper wow yeah because see ultimately the story see i'm 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 open to listen to all the good stories even hmm. from the smallest possible place okay uh then the the next thing is whether management is able to translate his goodness see lot of times managements don't know how good they are yes this is something you've told me before yeah i mean i have seen management after management uh they are almost duopoly almost monopolistic and yet they're not able to assert their terms of trade they'll keep giving 90 days credit 120 days credit and then you don't make money you know the customer is using your money sure got it so it is very important to be a tight management particularly in a competitive business hmm. you know? got it yeah. okay now you know i'm skipping questions uh, okay yeah, actually shivang shivasta was probably got the question that i wanted uh, to bring up right now and he asks ramde that how can a retail investor check the quality of a management in a relatively less known small and mid cap stocks or for that matter any stocks so you know this is a common question that we that i get asked ramde mm-hmm. that you are in media and you can speak to managements all big brokerages can speak to managements but we retail investors can't speak to managements no, so how do we determine the quality it is not important at all management will never tell you the bad things they always tell you good things so, so it is not imp- uh, important to uh, speak to managements now uh, all the brilliant analysts they ask in con call all the possible questions and all the transcript is all over bloomberg gives you all the transcript just uh, the moment uh, Uh, call is over your uh, um, what is that uh, money control ah. they give so there are a whole lot of digital platforms available where the entire q and a of what has been asked by an analyst to the management is there in the mm. print mm. so there is nothing left for you to ask in fact if you can read that properly that itself will give you an edge if you understand see you sit i find uh, very easy in fact the best way to research is go to slightly tier 2 or tier 3 town mm. all these companies have their uh, distributorship dealership sure. sit there mm. because customers come there customers don't come to the corporate office and figure out uh, how desperate the customer is to take the product wow you know i whenever i go to my uh, native place raipur ah. and all i do this so uh, you meet two three companies whichever companies you want to uh, research you go and uh, t- sit in the companies uh, dealership or distributorship hmm. and ask because the distributor is his career is involved with the company and what is happening in uh, one place is happening all over the country company is no different and you can see the business happening or not happening got it if if you are sitting there and 10 guys come and throw the product on your face ha uh, you know and you know what is happening sure or the bank is not able to work smoothly you know all sorts of problems are there hmm. and other bank is just smoothly doing it so you can feel the quality of business and quality of management got it okay uh, if i can slip in a secondary market question here mm-hmm. ramdev and mm-hmm. really i don't want to talk about stocks at all yeah. but just wondering since we are talking about uh, quality and sustainability mm. do you think this uh, recent you know it's 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 a, s- a set of quality names mm. which have been shunned by investors for the last 5 10 years which is psu banks mm. do you think what the government is trying to do uh, brings them back squarely into the uh, driver seat if not now then over the course of the next 2 3 4 years see one of the parameter which is uh, not having capital that is sorted out that will be sorted out if that's what they do but i don't think it is only about the capital it's also about the management it's about the hr practices it's about the competition see 10 years back private sector was very small today look at uh, resources of uh, uh, hdfc icic axis and all the banks you have given permission sure. so you have to compete against them Damn. so you ha- you cannot ha- in fact you should have a better policy now this all the public sector banks they have the fantastic brand equity and faith of the people customers yes customers they identify with them hmm. they have grown with them businesses yeah. have taken their money developmental money and they have grown with them so they are loyal to them 
Mm. It's not only about services. Mm. It's about loyalty. I would always go to the bank which has given me the first crore or something like that. Okay, so they have a lot of loyalty and a lot of goodwill uh, behind. The issue is that to uh, to run the, I mean, you have to have underwriting. There are a lot of crooks in the system also. They will go and again take the money. How do you avoid bad loans? Got it. In, the banking goes down. I mean, I learned it in uh, uh, 90s, uh, sorry, some, sometime in 90s, way back, 15 years back, in one of the Q&A sessions in Baksha Hathaway. And the manager said, the only way banks go down, only way, there is no second way. You can keep spending your way. You cannot go down in banks. Hmm. The only way banks go down is because of bad underwriting. If they set in one single parameter, if if government can find a way, or some commission or committee, um, PGNI committee or somebody can find a way, and they install that there is no bad underwriting in banks. Whether you are PSU bank or private sector bank, if you do bad underwriting, you'll go down. Hmm. If you do good underwriting, you'll just go through the sky. Interesting. You see, the problems are all bad underwriting. Sure. Okay. I mean, I'm not blaming anybody, but... Yeah, sure. Okay, anyways, a small deviation really from the topic at hand, which is talking about quality. I know we've got a bunch of questions on our social media platform as well, and there are so many questions that are coming in. I mean, there is somebody, Jay Shukla on Twitter is asking about, is it necessary for a stock to be a multi-bagger company has to grow 35, 40% like Bajaj Finance, Aisha or Page? But remember, this is not with regards to quality, so I'm leaving that out. Uh, the next question on quality is coming from Anuj Upadhyay. He's asking how important a role does the management teams effectiveness in managing the business uh, play uh, when it comes to determining the quality. Again, in parts we've answered these, Ramdev, but I've heard kind of two answers which I thought were slightly not conflicting, but a bit of a deviation wherein you did mention that quality refers to one, the quality of the business and quality of the management, mm. but you also mentioned that uh, quality of the management is probably not the most uh, important statistic, maybe the quality of the business could be a bigger statistic. I mean, am I correct or? Both are very important. Both are very important. I mean, uh, it, see, real life is very different in the sense that uh, you don't have a monopolistic business all over. Got it. See, if the monopoly is there, then ah. you can do with little lower quality management ah. because there is no alternative for the customer. True. He has to come and buy it from you. But that so, doesn't exist. But, uh, but even there, I mean, top quality, and that's why competition is required. Hmm. The top quality managements come only in a competitive environment, okay? So, uh, uh, management is very important, and more the competition, uh, more the importance of the management. Got it. You know? Yes. So, utility companies in India, the, I mean, they have local monopoly, say, in the city of Mumbai, there are only one supplier. Huh. What can you do? True. You know, so you are you are happy somehow getting the electricity. Yeah, yeah never mind the quality. Yeah, you keep cribbing, but uh, there's no uh, alternative. Yeah, so return on equity will remain very high. You know, <laughs> so but in a competitive business, you can throw me out. In asset management, if you are uh, not good, you throw it out tomorrow with a signature. You can move to the next uh, guy. True. So it is very important that and management is measured in terms of three things: competence. Okay, see, because no business can be run by incompetent guys. Mm. And I mean, any business who is successful has to have a competent uh, management. And in India, since it is the first generation management, because most of the guys are kind of seeing money for the first time, they're all first generation and they are fantastically hungry. Mm. Hunger in the management is one of the basic thing because the enterprises, they go up. True. So in India, there is no dearth of hunger. The problem is, uh, neither there is no dearth of competence also. Mm. The problem is, so they have the energy, they have the hunger. The problem is the integrity. That's the, earlier I used to think that is the third part of the uh, management competence, uh, but now I think that is the first one. First part. Because that's the least number of guys, they are uh, guys with a uh, high integrity. Uh. If there is a uh, energy and a hunger, but there's no integrity, you are again on the road. Is that changing, Ramdev? I mean, is the reason I'm asking is a lot. a lot of these, these so-called non yeah. Promoters with less integrity mm -hmm. now have the second generation which has studied abroad come back and realize the importance yeah. of market cap yeah. Yeah. and yeah. therefore But I still see among the smaller businesses who are not listed and all huh. They still don't want to mend their ways and they still uh, generate uh, cash and uh, they still want to avoid GST and uh, paying tax income taxes sure. So one of the criteria we had in private equity and all that uh, if anybody 
I mean, the moment the we realize that he's paying one third of his income as the tax, hmm. you know, uh, and he's giving, say if somebody says my profit is 50 crores, has he paid 25 crores? First question is has he paid 25 crores tax? Because the easiest is the authorities to be cheated. I mean, the government is cheated most easily. So if he has paid 25 crores tax, then you know the basic level of integrity test he has passed. Got it. So you know, having integrity is very important because see, ultimately. We are all minority shareholders. I mean, once we give the money or we buy the stock, you are running it the way you want. So if you if you can cheat the government, if you can cheat your employees, we have to also see how they are behaving with the employees, how mm. they are behaving with the uh, suppliers. So we get the messages from them. So Ramya, how does a re again my question is how does a retail guy get uh, all of these checks and balances? They will get it all. How? They're all living in uh, some small place, and everything is happening everywhere. So you are saying a retail investor before investing in a stock, ideally should be able to do at least four or five of these checks, if not more. Yeah, he can decide his uh, way of checking. Of course. I mean, uh, one is that read the balance sheet. Ha. There's no going away from reading the balance of sheet. Course. There is no going away from reading the con call, reading the uh, the thing, reading the newspapers about the what's happening in the industry. And then, uh, if you're in a small place, go and uh, watch what's happening in the shop. Sure. You know, which okay. shop is empty and which shop is, uh, <laughs> you know, um, uh, stock outs. Yeah, well, that, that could be an easier easier thing out as well. Okay. Now, this is a, a fairly interesting question. I'm guessing this is coming from somebody who's looked at uh, stocks and businesses uh, in, a, in a slightly detailed fashion. Kunal Sukhani is asking, I presume this has come on WhatsApp again. He's asking, what, what company do you prefer? An independent board-run company or a promoter-driven company? And does it make a difference in quality? See, if I prefer the companies which make a lot of money without <laughs> without take, without using any uh, money. Yeah. Then, see, once the number is there, then we go and see the narrative. Yeah. And if it is a promoter driven, how ethical the promoter is. If he's 80 years old, then what is the next line of defense? You know, what is the succession plan? You know, uh, but in India, there are very few absolutely professionally managed companies. Got very it. few. Yeah. Even the pro so-called professionally managed companies are run by one godfather or somebody. Hmm. So it, this, this has not really made a difference to the quality, perception, no, no, or the obviously, returns? No, no. See, what the, this modern management uh, huh. techniques of uh, so-called professionally managed or like that, uh, that gives longevity to the franchise. Sure. But if it is, uh, you know, managed by an entrepreneur, in that case, probably with the end of that guy, the company might not find a successor. Right. So it gives, a, you know, that always fear what happens after him. Yeah, but but you are. I mean, I'm just asking you. In India, this has really not made too much of a difference to you because most of the entities are, as you said, either promoter-driven or a godfather-driven entity. <laughs> in India, at least. I, I I would think so. You would think so. Okay, yeah. uh, Kunal. I hope that answers your question. We're talking about this more from an Indo in Indian perspective. Um, a, a query that has come in from. Uh, Indi, Bana, you know, I don't think Indi I can ask this question to Ramdev. I'll still pose the question, but I'm guaranteeing you that this is not the forum to be asking that question. But let me still try. I'm guessing the answer is that Ramdev will say, let's avoid this. But she's, she or he is asking, uh, what quality stocks are left with fair value after the 2014 rally? I'm, I don't think this is a forum to talk about it, but maybe if you can throw some light on. What quality stock? Huh. I'm not here to. They will kill me. Yeah. So, <laughs> and we run so much of money. In fact, I, uh, we must take the disclaimer. Some of the stocks we talked about is kind of enough. Yeah, these are all examples, yeah, enumerative examples. examples. Yeah. I don't so, think. Uh, uh, so, so there are enough. See, it's all about understanding. The, huh. As I said, margin of safety is in the quality. Huh. Margin of safety is there in growth. Margin of safety is in the price. Hmm. People are looking for cheaply priced, high quality company. That's yeah. not there. Got it. Visibility is not there. You have to work very hard hmm. because now you are at a 10,000 feet. 10,000. Okay, and now there is an Everest is at 30,000 feet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but climbing from 10 to 20 and 20 to 30 is for few guys. Yes. Yeah. So it is very going to be very tough. You have to find and you have to be very sure you can't commit. You can't afford to commit mistake yeah. because if you fall from 15,000 or 20,000, I mean your bones will not be found. Yeah. So uh, you have to be very careful because it will climb. Yes, and you, and it will be most mesmerizing journey from ten to thirty thousand, but but you know uh, you you need that competence skill uh, to pick the stocks and uh, uh, and uh, build a portfolio uh, mm. because there will be mistakes by even the most True. Uh, hardcore professional. But in the diversification, you know, of the twenty stocks and all, you will be able to save yourself. And when it comes down, don't look at the price. Mm. Look at the value, the story which you have built. 
Yeah. Numbers will be on your side, uh, story will be on your side, price will be against you. Yeah. So okay. there are stocks and uh, uh, and as the economy, global economy recovers, Indian economy recovers, there will be a lot of turnarounds, hmm. lot of turnarounds hmm. and a lot of stocks which are looking very good right now, they will get accelerated because management still has the capability to take up more business and grow faster. Wow. Okay. And remember, we will talk about this whole uh, uh, price and value thing yeah. a bit later Investing on in the next show as well. Investing is interlocking of concepts. Yes. See, it's not about it's one not thing. It's not isolation. Yeah, it's not in isolation. It's uh, sometimes price plays a big role, sometimes uh, quality plays a big role, sometimes longevity plays a big role. So, uh, you know, some total, you must, uh, you know, your mind must trigger. Hmm. Boss, here I am comfortable. Okay. Ramdev, I have a question before we wrap up this show. Yeah. Uh, and this question is coming from three people. So, Sandeep Menon, Kriti Karta, almost similar questions really. Mm -hmm. And third is Pranay Parekh. All three of them are asking this one question. Uh, what would Ramdev Agarwal uh, prefer? I, I'm not asking this question verbatim, but more or less around this question. Mm -hmm. A good business with an average promoter or a good promoter with an average business? Uh, good business with average promoter. Okay. Good business is non-negotiable. Okay. Completely non-negotiable. Okay. As I said, bad business run by Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh is not done. Not done. Okay. So I, I would guess the answer is good business is non-negotiable and therefore the key. But that doesn't mean you go out for a bad management. Uh, try and figure out, uh, as Ramdev said earlier, a number of times during this discussion as well, that a good management is also pertinent. Yeah. But yeah, good so business is non-negotiable. So one multiplied by zero is zero. Zero multiplied by one is also zero. Okay, fine. So you need one multiplied by one. Oh, one. Good business run by good management. Yeah. Okay. And uh, fine. Fair call. Okay, Ramdev. Since well, before we wrap up, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the reason I introduced this show this way is well that we had communicated at the start of this series, as I call it, mm -hmm. that we'll do a three-part series. But somewhere during the series, we did realize that it's very, very important to talk about price. Mm -hmm. And today, I think you've made three references to how people chase price but not value, mm -hmm. and maybe people should do that. But also that. Choosing a stock at a particular price which is providing value is very important. What do you think we'll focus on in the next discussion? I don't know. It depends on the questions you Question. ask. Okay, fair but, but what would but you, you like know, to yeah, focus so on? So what happens in QGLP bucket? We have thought, thought through big time. See, understanding value is one thing. But uh, uh, market is very, very uh, competitive. And now there is a FI market, there is a DI market, and the bucket is same. So their cost of money is very different, their return expectation is very different, our return expectation is very different, because our cost of money is also very different. And we are poor people, hungry people. They are, you know, uh, <laughs> rich, royal people, so they are pretty happy earning 7-8% uh, return. I mean, here at least 15-17% is, uh, you know, minimum required. So uh, it's a uh, complex situation, so how, what is the right price? I mean, uh, at what price you should buy and how do you, how do you tackle this overvaluation, the problem of overvaluation right now? Should you avoid buying? Should you, uh, should you, so what, what should be the strategy and what we are doing? You know, and how do we negotiate this? Uh, I know market is pricey. And uh, my problem is that I'm in the market for 35 years. So I have seen single digit P multiples. I mean, for the market itself, I mean, I think in 2003, 4 Reliance itself was in single digit. I mean, just a year back, again, Reliance was in low double digit, mm -hmm. like 12, 11, 12 times. So uh, markets give you opportunities. And I have seen, and then from there, you have seen some companies which are trading close to 100 P's. And actually, this 80, 90, 100 P's have made more money in the last two or five years than ever before. Okay. So, all these things we can take up. Great. So, we'll talk about all of this and more in the next episode, the final uh, episode of uh, this really interesting an educative series. It's been one for me, but yeah, we're not calling it a day because we've got one more chance to talk to Ramdev Agarwal, which is next Tuesday at 11 a.m., so do, do tune in for that as well. But thanks for joining in on this episode, Ramdev. Thanks for taking the time out yet again thanks. and speaking with us today. I, I hope, you know, it, uh, people understand the complexity of it. So, uh, in one episode, we talked about one thing, another one, uh, other thing, but it all works together, you know. Yeah. Every time, I mean, we keep jumping from one to other. When we're talking about quality, we talk about longevity, we talk about growth, and again longevity. So, uh, nothing is, you know, nothing, one thing is uh, important. Yeah. But the stories of the stocks start from one thing which is completely unrelated to any of the four. Hmm. And then you end up, uh, you know, I mean, the stories of uh, whatever sure. I have uh, got in my portfolios. I mean, if you hear real story, I mean, maybe uh, next time we'll talk some stories of uh, how we picked up 
Should be really interesting. Uh, yeah, that will be very interesting. Okay, maybe it's a two-hour episode the next time. No, not really. <laughs> but we'll talk about all of this and more. Thanks for yeah. tuning in today. And stay tuned to Bloomberg Quint.